let's start right there. Hello, Jackie Gutierrez, Women Kickballs. Um, just first off, following the first half, what were just some of your thoughts in terms of um, just any key points that you passed along the team to really change things around for the second half? Uh, just, I was actually really pleased with the first half. I thought it took a lot of uh, patience to continue to try and increase the tempo. I think that was a the big theme that we walked away from with the last game is just knowing this is a team that really wants to slow the game down and that, it, uh, that we needed to increase the tempo at all times, so through hard defending, transition moments, and then when we were on the ball, to keep the ball moving. Um, and I think it requires a lot of patience. This is a team that's, uh, that's difficult to break down, so I'm really pleased that we just continued to try and push the tempo when they seemed to slow it down quite a bit. A lot of fouls, and I'm really proud of the response that we just put the ball back in play when we could and kept the ball moving. The mic might have gone out. No? Yeah, that was a little weird, but yeah. it's back now. <laughs> yeah, there's 27 fouls for them and 20 for us. It's quite a few. Uh, Scotty. That's, he's right there. Everyone knows Scott. Scott, it's in front of you. Hey, uh, Scott French with Soccer America. I want to ask you about two players, uh, kind of obvious guys, and if you could uh, address them individually, uh, Jaden Shaw and uh, Mia Fischel, what, uh, what you saw from them in camp, what you saw from them today in the game, and what is their path in terms of uh, becoming bigger presences within this team, within this program going forward? Yeah, well, we're really, really pleased with both of them. I think kind of what we talked about as a staff as a federation, and what the players and I have been talking about is exactly what's happening. They've had an onboard process. We've introduced them to the environment with little pressure. They've then dressed, had an opportunity to learn specific things, and then got their first caps, and then got extended playing time and made the most of it. So we're really, really pleased with how they've seized those opportunities, but also their patience and the path that, that we're helping them to create. They're really, really solid players. Uh, very talented players. Mia, I think the first thing she brought to the game right away is just able to settle the ball back to goal, hold onto the ball, allow people to join. Um, I thought she did a really good job of that. Obviously, scoring a goal is a, is a big thing and something that we talked about across the whole team. Jaden, I think you just see her quality between the lines and ability to face up and play a final ball. Really uh, easy to play with, a joy to link up with. She did a good job defending today, which is something that we've been talking to her about. And that's part of keeping the tempo against a team like this. It's not easy to do as a young professional. So we're really pleased with that. Good, Scott. Front row and then hand it on back. Hey, uh, so yesterday you mentioned Jaden and Mia. They haven't had a lot of time in the camp, but their connection today, it seemed like they've been playing for a long time. Can you speak to what it's like to have young players that can immediately make an impact like that? Yeah, well, I, I also want to acknowledge they're not the only young players in the squad. I think that we've got quite a few young players that have been in the group for a while, and, and now they're the most recent onboarding, uh, players that are onboarding. Their connection today was really good. Um, I think that when the game started to open up a little bit and they brought a little bit of a sense of calmness and were able to find each other, that was a really good thing. Of course, it happened at a time when the game was stretched and they made the most of that. Um, so yeah, it was really fun to watch them. and kind of anticipate, I anticipated that and knew that that would be a good connection between the two of them. I am going to ask you about Scott's second half of this question about their future and the continued patience that the coaches will show with them. The question? About the, the he asked about the future of Mia and Jaden and all of the young players in this team and sort of what yeah, we're talking I think about for, yeah. Whether you're a young player or you're a veteran player, the key is that every, you never know if you're gonna get invited back. That's something you have to earn every single time. And then you're in camp, you have to compete daily for the minutes that you get. You also have to compete in your home market for the minutes that you're gonna get. You've gotta be able to show that you can play at the international level and that your quality translates to this. And then when you get in the environment, you have to execute. And today was, was a really, really good day for them in terms of proving that they could execute. And we anticipate anticipate that they'll need to do that again in their club and in the international markets. Um, but that's the same for every single player in the program. Nothing's promised to anybody. And I think that kind of the path that we took with them kind of proves that it's good to take things slow. And their futures are very bright. Well said. Go ahead. 
Alejandro from San Diego Punta Football. Mia Fischel has been playing at this level for the past couple seasons with Tigres Femenil. Mm -hmm. What do you think took so long for the U.S. national team to take notice of her? Well, before she answers that, I'm going to say she wasn't playing at this level because she was playing with Tigres and not at the national level. But you can speak to her talents. Yeah, I think, um, I think we, well, I know we were watching Mia with Tigres. And uh, she did a great job with them. And we also had some other talented forwards in the mix, and it wasn't the right time for the coaching staff at the time to bring her in. And I think that she's benefited a lot from her time at Tigres. She, I've known Mia since she was a young, young player, very young player. And uh, you can, what she developed playing for Tigres is, is more, um, I think actually some of that back to goal and combination play underneath and things like that were well practiced with Tigres. And now you see her adding a different element to her game at Chelsea. And this is just part of her journey. And now she has a next step with her journey with us. Um, but I know she really values that time at Tigres and, and so do I. I enjoyed watching her there. I, I actually got a chance to watch in person before I joined the national team staff and after I joined the national team staff. And it's a great, great club. And uh, she had a high impact there, and, and now she's on to a different chapter of her life. And, and both have an influence in the player that she is that is now with us. Go ahead, front row. You're not going to ask about MA, are you? No. I'm okay, not. good. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Go ahead. Uh, speaking of the young players, obviously, with coaching the U.S. national team, there's always a ton of talent. But especially, it seems like right now at the forward position, there are a ton of young forwards who are have really come onto the scene and made a difference. As a coach, how hard, how hard is it? Obviously, it's great to have so much talent, but how hard is it to kind of balance you know, giving each player playing time and ensuring their development is kind of moving forward in the right direction on the field while having so many mouths to feed? Yeah, I, I really feel like we needed to be strategic with this to get the best out of everybody and make sure that all the players had an opportunity to move towards the Olympics. So. When I took over this position, I knew there were a few things that we needed to do. I talked about this a little bit yesterday or the last press conference, whenever that was. But, you know, we were turning from the World Cup. The whole group needed to regroup. That was a very important thing. We had some players that didn't play enough minutes in the World Cup to get a, the type of look that we're, next coach is going to need towards the Olympics. They needed to play more. We needed to send off two really special legends in the game for us. And we needed to onboard these players and get minutes. And it may not happen as fast as the public wants, or, but it, it happens with a strategy. There's a reason behind it. And now this team, I truly believe, is in a good place to move forward with lots of different types of selections that could take place for the next head coach and enough opportunity to evaluate um, different types of players while growing the players towards the direction that they need to go to be prepared for the Olympics and enjoying playing. All right, let's go to the online guest, Jeff Kasouf. Go ahead, buddy. Uh, thanks, Aaron. Uh, thanks for taking the time, Twyla. I'm just wondering, what, what does Emily Sonnet in that sixth position bring and, and unlock for you all uh, on both sides of the ball? It seems like you sort of focused on, on getting her out wide and throughout these matches of, of combination play with that, that fullback and then obviously on the defensive end. What has she kind of allowed everybody else to do? Son is a great organizer. She, she is another coach on the field in a lot of different ways, but she, she works with us on the game plan like every player understands what her role is, understands what the team is trying to do in every phase, but also what her specific role is in each phase. And she actually solves problems for the people around her. She helps with communication. She's always on the front foot. Um, in terms of attack, she offers a little bit of patience. You see a lot of bounce passes going through her so we can move the ball. Uh, and think off the ball, gives time for players to think off the ball with a little bounce pass. She looks to play forward. She's a link up player for us in terms of connecting to um, other attackers in the pockets or in scene two. She can rotate out wide and create an overload. She understands how to ma manipulate a defender that might be latched onto her and move them. Um, and defensively, I mean, if you just look at how many tackles she laid today, she just offers us such a great presence in countermeasures, and that gives the confidence for players ahead of her to take some risk and look to play forward more because they know that she's behind them. All good, Jeff? I think he is. Let's go to Meg Linehan. Go ahead, Meg. There you go. Oh, sorry. 
Uh, hi, Twyla. Just wanted to check in about Sam Coffey and kind of where she is and her return back to the team. This has been recording kind of in progress. Uh, significant <laughs> minutes that we've seen her hit uh, with the national team in a while. So just wondering what your assessment of her and the, the pool overall is right now. Yeah, I'm really happy for her that she got some minutes today. That's something she's needed to be patient on. And I look forward to working with her uh, based on the game today, to having a really good look at the film. I thought she showed good energy, a good effort to try and implement our game plan. And there's some things that she'll continue to work on as a younger player in a really important role. That six has a lot of responsibilities, um, has to get out wide on high press, has to do a lot of defendings, got to win balls in the air, and learning to split the field and share that responsibility with somebody else is not is not easy. Um, she's a great great student of the game and very eager to move forward and and I support that. Let's go to Andrew Jones. This is the last one, unless anyone else in the room has one. Go ahead, Andrew. Thank you, Aaron. Appreciate that as always. And Twyla, congratulations on the win. You came really as an instrument in a unique time with NWSL in the middle of his playoffs, and obviously with the send-offs to both me and, and also Julie. So I wanted to ask you, was there any thoughts of playing, even you know, starting the younger players in this second uh, friendly with Columbia, considering uh, Columbia's changes to their lineup and their absences? And the um, and right at the end of the match or on the field, Alex Morgan bringing the team together and having that moment with you. Can you talk about just that whole vibe with the team and how they appreciate you and if you want to continue on in December for your plans? Thank you. All right, that's a lot to unpack. Start with your appreciation of the uh, experience of these four games. Yeah, when I got the call from Matt to take this opportunity, um, I knew I was going to say yes. And I didn't actually know how much I would enjoy it. I knew it was something that I wanted to do. I actually just told Matt this recently, but if I had known how much I would have enjoyed it on the front end, uh, I would have gotten to more joy earlier, but it's it's truly been the most rewarding experience of my coaching career thus far. I love working with this team. I love working with this program. I love working with these players, and it means the world to me. And as far as considering starting young players instead of bringing them on? No, I, I going into uh, friendlies, with the goal of accomplishing a lot of different things and seeing different combinations of players together. Uh, this was pre-scripted prior coming into camp, and it was the hope that we would get this opportunity to play this particular ending group together, and we were able to do that, so I'm really excited about that. But these are things that we take into consideration, minute recommendations, the health of players, who we want to see uh, play together, what types of combinations we can play together at the same time in terms of, you know, there's all sorts of things that go into it, making sure you're set for set pieces and, and a lot of little details. Um, but this was the goal and we're really excited that we were able to do that. And I think there's opportunity in the future for, for different scenarios, but I think this was the right one this time. 